Good morning, folks. Big earthquake struck as the news was coming together. We've got looks at the top Earth and space science news here, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours a much calmer sight than before. No bright active areas, plasma filaments slightly less jumpy than in previous days. Just have the coronal hole dark patches crossing the disk. Their solar wind has not yet arrived at Earth as the stream in geospace fluctuates in completely quiet range, with geomagnetism following similar orders in all quiet territory. Meanwhile, the ground has been anything but quiet so far this morning. After the two largest quakes of the last day were blood echoes at the low-velocity zone of the mantle, a couple seven-pointers and large aftershocks have begun striking the Japan-Russia border region. If anyone shared the alert map from our app on Twitter or Facebook or somewhere else last night, please send in a link and share that link in the comment section today. It was another hit for the red alert star on our watch map, and with our Twitter being suspended, the Disaster Prediction app is the only place to find those maps. You are allowed to post app screenshots, just a little note about where it came from, and again, if you did it last night, please share that link with the rest of us. We also had Mount Merapi go off in Indonesia yesterday, 2,000 foot plume and an aesthetic sight, but no major concerns for the people nearby there. Let's shift to the US where overnight the system charging up through the southern states had intermittent severity but was just moving too coherently for major storm mixing. Lightning tracker on goes was wonderful to watch this morning as the signature slid eastward throughout the night. Worse of it comes to North Carolina today before swinging offshore for the most part. Up first in the article news, these are the Lagrange points where you can stably sit without thrusters based on the orbital dynamics of the system, and in terms of watching the sun, L5 is what we want. Dr. Lisa Upton's 2019 Observing the Frontier conference presentation was about this, and it basically gives us a few days warning on major sunspots, plasma filaments, and coronal holes turning in to face the Earth. This is the number one priority for solar satellites following the Parker probe and recently launched Solar Orbiter. Stepping out to other star systems, they're trying to learn how the disks of young planetary systems impact different shadows on the surrounding areas. We do often see carved out darkness and weird discontinuities to the shapes of spectral returns and light signatures nearby to those nascent systems. This should help them figure out how the disk orientation has caused the shapes they're seeing at a slightly larger scale. Up next, a reduction of aerosol pollution led to fewer extreme cold days in Europe. That's a good thing for people living there, but it's a bit opposite of expected. Our pollution is supposed to reduce the cold and heat the planet to oblivion, right? Well, it turns out it was driving the worst of the worst cold events in Europe. Now that it is reduced, it's not the heat that's been mitigated, but the severe cold, or so they say. I really don't think they have any clue what these particles are doing. Heck, they tell us carbon dioxide is a powerful thermospheric coolant, but the bringer of heat below. They're a bit all over the place recently, but luckily, the focus from the new kids on the block, the solar forcing crowd, is on point. IPCC estimates of solar forcing of the climate are one-tenth, ten times lower than the best guess here. It also plainly gives about 66% of the global warming blame to the higher solar activity we saw last century, and leaves about a third left for human-caused global warming. Two of the authors are just up the road in Boulder, Colorado, where probably the top solar climate interplay science departments can be found at the university and integrated with UCAR, NCAR, and the High Altitude Observatory. Again, IPCC is 10 times too low on the sun, and get this, this paper's looking at irradiance, not even the particles. This story is written. So let's go to the one being penned as we speak. Last night, we put out the reason for the critical importance of cosmology. Most people don't realize how much of our lives, the science on this channel, and the science you might be into on other channels is intimately related to the correct universal scale science. The correct cosmology opens the door to everyone being capable of better understanding existence and we greatly appreciate your support. That video is linked below. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.